Hello and welcome to the year's first screencast. Now, I don't have an English accent, so this cannot possibly sound as cool as the ones you'll see if you look on the internet, but I'm going to do my best. So what we're going to learn about today is we're going to learn how to use Google Charts. Google Charts is a great API. This is going to be your first real, I guess, dive into API use uh, when you're studying computer science at Greenwich High School. No better time to do it than now. Um, so what you're going to want to do is go to this URL, google-developers.appspot.com slash chart. I've put the URL in the information section of this video. And when you get there, you'll see this page. And we're just going to click Get Started. Now this is one of the reasons Google is so great, it's because they have all sorts of APIs like Google Charts and using them is so simple. For example, let's just take their getting started code, we're just going to take all of it, don't ever be shy about doing this. We're going to copy it and we're going to paste it right into our Sublime Text Editor and let's save it onto our desktop, well, Google Chart Test. Okay, good. Now let's take a look real quick at the code and, and just what it does. Um, so this piece, and Google's commented it very nicely, so this loads the Ajax API. Um, you don't really know much about Ajax yet. Uh, don't worry about it. You just need it so that the chart functions correctly. This loads the visualization API and the pie chart package. So this calls to Google to load the API that handles all of the chart drawing. All right, so you need that when you want to draw Google Charts. This sets a callback to run when the visualization API is loaded. A callback is just kind of like saying, hey, draw chart. We want you to work once this happens. Okay? So we want to tell Google when the load happens to draw a chart. That way you won't be drawing the chart without the API actually loaded, because if you do, you'll probably get something that looks like what you don't want it to look like. And, you know, that's not what we want to have happen, right? So we're going to have our draw chart function run when the visualization API is loaded. All right, and here is the function that draws it. So let's check out the function. This notation you should very much understand. Here's our data table, variable data equals new. This is a new type of variable for you. Um, this is in the Google Chart API. It's, uh, you know, a custom variable. So it's a google.visualization.datatable. I bet you can guess what it does. Okay, and look at the methods for the data table. We have data, add column. For those of you, data table challenge, that's the vertical one. <laughs> so data, add column, and it takes two arguments here. Check this out. It's got string, topping. I'll give you a second to see if you can guess what those mean. If you guess that the first entry, the first argument was the data type, and the second was the value of that data type, or the heading of the column, then you guessed right. And look at the next one. Add column. We're gonna, it's going to take a number, and the title is going to be slices. Okay. So chances are we're going to have a whole bunch of toppings, and the number of slices you ate of those toppings. I bet you can guess we're talking about pizza here, and uh, you're probably right. So we've added two columns to our chart. Now we have to add rows, the vertical ones. Notice how these work. Okay, it says data add rows, and it takes this object here as an argument. Can you guess what that object is? It looks like an array, and in fact it is, but it's an array of arrays. Okay, it's a new kind of object that we're going to be working with a lot in this class. It's called a multi-dimensional array, and this one, an array of arrays that contain two objects, has also been known to be called a dictionary. Okay, dictionaries are really, really useful. Um, we're going to talk a lot about them throughout the course, but multi-dimensional arrays, you're going to start seeing them a lot. It sounds really a lot more scary than it is. It's just an array of arrays. So here's an array, mushrooms, dash, or comma, three, and we have a whole bunch of those in here. All right, so we're adding those rows. Each one of the arrays in the array is a row. So in that row, the first value we're going to put is mushrooms and then the number slices is three. So this person has eaten three mushroom slices, one onion slice, one olive slice, one zucchini slice, and two pepperoni slices. Feel free to customize this now if you want. We're going to go back and do a little bit more with it later, though. 
Finally, set chart options. This is where you're going to customize your chart with any sort of styling you want. Um, there's all sorts of other things that we're going to learn how to do about uh, do to the chart, but for now we're just going to leave it like this: title, width, and height. Okay, and finally we have to instantiate, which is another new term for you. When you're talking about objects, instantiate means you're basically giving, telling the browser to allocate memory to the object. So we're going to create and allocate memory to the object, and then we're going to draw the chart, passing in the options that we described here. So chart equals new google.visualization.pychart. And then we're going to put that in document.getElementById.chartDiv. You know what that does. It searches your document for an element with the ID of chart underscore div. And sure enough, it's over here. Finally, we're going to tell that chart to draw itself with the data that we made up here and the options that we made right here. And if all goes according to plan, it'll work. Let's see. Hey -o! It did. Check it out. Now, Google Chart is really great because it has this interactivity here, which is some really cool functionality. Um, this is not necessary to put in, you know, anything, but it certainly makes life easy. All right, so that was great. We have a basic Google Chart setup. What if we wanted to customize the data? Let's go back to the data real quick. If you notice, if you change this number to 2, you're not actually going to mess up the chart because the way that it calculates the percentage is by the total number of numbers in the slices thing. For example, you'll see that the pie chart changes, but it's still a pie chart. So let's go back to the data here, and let's change this to the number of pizza slices that you've eaten in the last month. So I'm going to change mine. Let's see, I actually, uh, I only like one type of pizza. You guys are going to laugh at me. Uh, okay, so Brissetta. I think I've eaten like 13 slices of those in the last month. Uh, and then cheese. I think I probably had two slices of cheese. All right, let's save it. Let's refresh it. I'm not a math whiz, but I think that's probably about how that works. Okay, at this point you should pause the video and you should go ahead and customize the data to be anything you want. Let's keep it with the food theme. So keep it to, you know, the amount of food of any type that you've eaten. It could be pizza, it could be, you know, hamburgers, uh, whatever you like, whatever your favorite food is, and go ahead and make a chart out of it. I'll give you a second to pause the video now. All right, are you unpaused yet? Good. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at how to customize the chart because let's just say we don't want these, you know, blue and orange and red and whatever colors they have. Um, so we want to we want to change it a little bit. I'm going to undo my food options here and go back to what they had before just just for fun. So if you go back to the Google Developers site, you'll see they have a lot of different uh, items here. The one that we're going to deal with right now is customizing with options. Okay, so this is the same code that you've seen before. And they've highlighted set chart options. Okay, this is what you're going to be able to customize. Here's some sample sets of options that you could use. Legend, left, title, is 3D, width and height, you know already. But legend left, I bet you could guess what that does. And is 3D, you could probably also get what, guess what that does. Okay, you can pass in all sorts of options. And it says the options available for the pie chart include all these. You can actually find the options available for any type of Google chart just by looking at the documentation, which I strongly suggest that you do. All right, and we also want to specify the chart size. That's easy. And I'm going to click on this more information piece because that's going to have a lot more stuff for us. For example, you know, I, I tend to like colors. We care a lot about colors and design here. So if you look here, you can specify the colors that are going to be in your slices. Let's just take this real quick. We're going to take this line of code real quick. We're going to put it into our options. We're going to inspect it. I'm going to play with it.
Okay, so you'll notice that there are five entries to this array of colors, and they are all hex codes. This could be RGB values too, whatever you want. And there are five rows in our data table. Five entries for colors, five rows in our data table. That makes sense. Always make sure the array of colors that you pass in are equal to the number of rows in your data table, because otherwise your chart will behave like you don't want it to. Let's go ahead and save that. Let's load it up. Looks like I messed something up. Oh, I think I put quotes around colors. Well, I don't know what I did. Oh, I found it. Forgot to put a comma at the end of 300. There we go. Aha. Okay, so now we've changed the colors of all the slices of our pie chart to a little bit of a monochromatic color theme. This is really important to be able to do because as we start getting into designing data visualizations, you're going to want to have a lot of control over the colors. Last year we learned about color schemes. This year we're going to study some, ca some case studies of data visualization and I guarantee you that a lot of them are monochromatic. So point is, this is how you customize for colors. At this point what I'd like you to do is go into the uh, Google Developers documentation. Check out all the options available for a pie chart. Customize your chart. It can be toppings you like on your pizza. It could be it could be whatever you want. Customize your chart. Go ahead and make it look nice. And what I'd like you to do is uh, hand in your code with any color theme you want, any uh, title you want, and any data you want. As long as it's not the exact same data that Google used. And that's all you have to do for today. Thanks for watching.